So now we've went ahead and we've actually covered navigating um, SharePoint at this stage. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go through some of the rest of the course and essentially talk about the different components and make sure that we've got it all down. So one of the very first things we do is, is whenever we start to navigate SharePoint, we start thinking about certain things like permissions, okay? And permissions become a big deal because we need to control who can actually access our information in SharePoint. So a classic thing I'll do is I'll come in here on site actions and I'll start thinking to myself, you know, I need to control who can access what on this site. Right now I just have an open site. So I click site permissions over here. And you guys see what once again I click site actions and now I come down to site permissions. I'm taking control of the content at this point, even though there really isn't any content just yet. And now what I'm doing over here is I'm starting to look and I see all of these pre-built all of these pre-built groups. Very interesting with what are known as permission levels. Let me explain this right off the bat. So SharePoint includes certain types of sites, essentially, okay? And this is a very essential concept. And right now, I'm not going into you learning what every single one of these groups go do. What I want you to learn instead at this stage, at, at this stage, assuming that you're brand new to SharePoint, is I want you to understand that you can come over here and you can go inside of this and you can actually choose to add or remove users in groups. So you guys see over here, I can click on the add right over there and then I can choose to start adding users within here. But I want you guys to see over here that these are what are known as permissions and these give us strong, strong ability to control who can do what. For example, if I don't want somebody, if I don't want someone to be able to, oh, start editing pages and whatever else, I might give them view only. That's it. All they can do then is just actually, all they can do over there is just actually view, view pages, list items, documents, things like that. But you know they can't actually they can't actually download anything just view it in the browser so very very handy as you guys can see over here um, very very handy over there now permissions being an essential part and you gotta think about that because that's gonna be critical the next thing I want you guys to understand is what are list and libraries so to speak so let me come over here and click on list on the left I'm gonna come over here and click list and now when I click list right over here notice over here that I've got this list option and before I told you and I said, you guys know what? Guess what a list is? It's just a table that shows in a browser. What? Table that shows in a browser? Yep, that's it. A list is just a table that displays in a browser. But it's going to display in a tabular form in the browser unless we change its look, which we can do. So this is it. It's, it's some sort of contained data. See, think about this right off the bat. The nature of a repository is a database, right? And if the nature of a, of a repository is going to be storing data in a database, how do databases typically store data, usually? In tables, right? And tables are intuitive for us as human beings. We like tables. We like seeing things like columns and rows. There's just something about it that we humans seem to respond to extremely well. So having learned this, wouldn't it make sense if you could actually show tables in a browser? Let's see what I'm talking about. So tables, columns, and rows. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on Site Actions. And then on Site Actions, I'm going to tell it that I want some sort of new tabular form of data inside the browser. So I come down, I click on More Options. And then when I come down and I click on More Options, I'm now going to come down and let's say I'm going to choose to make an actual mm, list. So I come down over here and I'll click list. Now all these templates come up. As you guys can guess, which is beyond the scope of our two hour course, every single one of these does something very particular or at least will help you get started. See these are preset templates that are designed to be able to store for particular forms of data or particular forms of data that you need. Now I come over here and I decide that maybe I want a custom list. This is something that's not really pre-configured for anything. This is where I'm gonna make the table. So I'll call this custom list um, for the custom list, and I'm going to call it Demo oh, Browser Tabular View. I could have called it whatever I wanted to call it, and so can you. But what I want you to see over here is that this is going to be a tabular view of data in the browser. Now, it's still stored in an underlying database. I want you to understand that. But it appears, but it appears in a browser, essentially, instead of you know, going, having to go back to a, to a pure database. I'm going to click Create. So I create it right over there. Demo browser tabular view. I misspelled tabular. That's embarrassing, but it's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it. Now, I'm going to come over here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on list settings. 
See, one of the cool things about SharePoint is there's 10 ways to do everything, and I mean everything. But over here, though, I'm going to go into List Settings, which is, which is one way where you can basically go into any list or document library. And by the way, a list is, like I said, a tabular view of data that tends to be less specialized than a library. That's a nice way to think of it. They can be specialized, but they're typically less specialized than a library. A library tends to, tends to be built for a high, high specialization, particularly involving Microsoft Office. Catch that if you can. Library tends to be tabular data that's dedicated to Microsoft Office sort of functionality, typically. If you, ever think, if you think of it like that, you'll understand list and library. Both are tabular forms, but one is more focused on the... One is more focused on what you can do with Microsoft Office and storing Microsoft Office types, where another one is just a general sort of a general sort of champion. Okay, now next up. So I come over here and I need some columns, right? Because any sort of table needs columns, right? So I click on Create Column, and I choose right over here, Demo Column One. Boom! I could have called it whatever I wanted to, but you get the point. Demo Column One, and I choose now that I'll allow people to put in one single line of text, and that'll be it. And then I'll come down and I'll leave all, the, all these other settings alone and I'll click OK. Now, if you're noticing over here, there's a section called Columns and one, two, three, four. Three of them were there by default. SharePoint will start you out, depending upon your template, you'll start out with default columns. In this template, we only start with threes. Other ones, we start out with more. Now, I've got these columns over here, so boom, 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 boom. This looks very good. It looks like we're actually progressing. OK, great. Now, the next part. Once we've actually got columns over here, let's see how it actually looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back, and I'm going to click on Demo Browser Tabular, tabular View. And I could have added a bunch of columns, 100, 200, 300. You get the point if I would have wanted to, although that's not a best practice. will cause performance problems, but you could have done it or could cause performance problems. Well, actually, will cause performance problems. Okay, and there we go. And now look, there's two columns showing because these two columns are actually displayed. Um, title and demo one. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to click add a new item, just like a standard table. And for the title, I'll say um, our first title. So say that you our first title, okay? Um, and then for demo column one, and then I'll say and, and then I'll say what I was going to say. We'll call this demo column one example. Or no, I know what I'll do. I'll call it I'll call it our example for everyone. So everyone who's watching this video can essentially see it. And click save. Oh, look at that. I was able to go through a browser and actually enter in data. Now, wait, stop just for a second. How many of you have ever wanted this sort of functionality where you could basically say, you know what, I've got a form, or I want to be able to create some sort of way where people can go on a browser, can actually enter in information, and have it get stored inside of a database, and then I go about my way. Maybe I create a form, maybe I create something like that, you name it, but I want them to be able to fill it out, on, on, fill it out in a browser and create it. Guys? Think for a second how many steps that just took. That took me basically clicking site actions, coming over here now, and then coming down over here, right, and actually finding more options. I added a list by clicking over here. I chose a type, and if you notice, what's really nice is that they even tell you what the types do. So you can really get a lot of practice. Or you can take the free courseware. By the way, just a quick note. Um, all the things that I'm saying over here are going to be published on my blog. That's part of the SharePoint end user course. So you can actually follow through the tutorials yourself if you choose to get Office 365 or if you choose to download the free SharePoint information worker machine. I'm not a salesman for Microsoft, though, so keep that in mind. Whatever you choose to get is yours if you choose to buy Office 365 or if you choose to get the, the free version for six months. Just simply stating that you can go back and do all these yourself if you want to learn it. That's the benefit of the two-hour lunch and learn. Okay, now came back again and I just chose that and then I put in a name that simple that's all it took any name and I hit create I won't hit create here but I hit create and that's it now I've given my users the power to be able to enter in information automatically and store information in a database I did go back into the database though and I clicked on the data table then I came back over here and there's something called list tools and in that context sensitive menu which we talked about before the menu that appears in the context that we're using it or when we need it in other words what we do is we click on some option I came down, I went down to list settings, which there are 10 other ways to be able to create columns, but I use list settings. And then I came down, I just started adding new columns. These columns would store whatever type of data was needed. Most of you who are brand new will become so good at this to where it will become second nature. 
one, one lab exercise and another one for practice, and you, you're doing it. Now, suddenly, you've, you've enabled automatic entry and form entry over the web for any user that you want. Guys, that used to take a long time, or ladies and gentlemen, that used to take a very long time to do. In SharePoint, it takes two minutes to do. That's pretty incredible. Okay, let's even go further. So we went ahead and we ha got that, and we got a tabular view of data, by the way, and we used that, and we got to see a list in practice. But let's say that we had, let's say that let's, sometimes we really need some starting functionality, right? What if we want to actually start somewhere? Like, for example, what are the most common types of things that we need to do in an organization? Let me tell you one universal common type, task. Whoops, let me say it again, task. Okay, and just one more time to be good, task. See, we have to assign certain things for people to do. We have to find ways from, we have to tell them what to do, and then we need to have some sort of way to track that they actually do what's done. Wouldn't it be great if we could have some sort of automated tracking sort of thing to where we could see how people were completing the essential functions for our organization? And these essential functions could be any sort of functions. I don't care if it's a mechanic changing, a mechanic changing oil or if it's a database person, you know, actually cleaning out a database. We need some sort of way to be able to assign that to them in a web type interface that can be tracked and quantified and that doesn't involve a bunch of complexity. So let me show you guys a classic example. Let's just say that you're inside of the situation now to where you need to go ahead and start assigning tasks or whatever. So this is very common. Many organizations will be approached with this problem. I need some sort of way to be able to come in and be able to assign task. So I need a way to be able to assign and track task. You can download a bunch of freeware and play with it and get it to work. That's true. But for most organizations,